evening, everybody. Um, welcome to today's um, section, today's um, part of the training. Um, we are actually trying to wait for more people to join. So please, if you actually join and if you can hear me, can you actually just drop a note or something that can signify that I'm audible enough? Okay, like so somebody and somebody can signify. It. All right, so that means I'm good to go. All right, so welcome. I'm okay. I'm welcoming you all again. We're trying to like wait for more people to actually join up because today is like the grand finale of all our trainings. So, and we're having two speakers who are coming on board, bringing a lot of experience to actually share and give more light to what. They have to talk about so please let's stay tuned let's um let's take a view too let's um let's um, have a little patience while we wait for others to actually join up and then so that we can we can all enjoy this section together so um let's let's um give them like a ten two to um two to five minutes more more break so that we can have a good join up so thank you please just um Hold up on the meeting, just hold on, and then we'll be back again. It's more of what you've been in tune for. So please bear with us to so wait for others to join. Thank you. Okay, so I'm back again. Um, can everyone hear me again? Uh, please, can you guys signify so that I can be sure that um, everyone can hear whatever I'm going to say? So please, can you hear me? Can you guys kindly signify so that um, we have a very clear section? Okay, so thank you. I got a note that it's crystal clear. So um, once again, thank you all for joining in. Um, again, we're gonna have a very wonderful and impactful um, section. Again, it's time for us to bring in our first speaker. Um, and I believe we all have our notes, our pen and our notepad ready to put down um, knowledge that will be dished out today during this time. So um, not to waste more time, I would like to introduce the um, speaker for today. Um, please, can anybody from the team, can anybody just project the speaker's um, profile. Anybody on the team, just can you um, project the speaker's profile on so that we can all see the profile? All right, so while we're waiting for a member from the team to do that, um, I would introduce um, the speaker um, who is very experienced and um, She's going to share to us a lot of things from our wealth of experience. She'll be dishing out a lot that would actually help our business, that would actually help us grow as entrepreneurs, as um, as MSMEs. Okay, thank you. Whoever is doing that, thank you. Um, right, so um. Yes, once again, we have our first speaker who is already. She's actually on board. Um, a name, um, her name is Emma Betts Tekken. So I don't know if I pronounced well, but uh, I guess I tried. Emma Betts Tekken. So um, she is a professional global citizen. She's dedicated to igniting Ethiopia's um, entrepreneurial spirit and building a brighter future. Again, she's a seasoned business consultant. She spearheads innovative projects in startups, um, the private in startups, the private sector, youth employment, and women's empowerment. She's equipped with international certifications and empowers MSMEs through strategic business development services and training programs. She's also an international business consultant involved in the implementation of various projects. Emma Betts is a founding manager of Low Cost Training and Consulting PLC and currently working on a key expert as a key expert in GOPA International Consultants Group 
and as a communication and partnership lead at Entrepreneurship Development Institute in Utopia. So welcome with me, Emmebet Tekken. So Emmebet Tekken, the floor is open for you to have a wonderful section with us. So we are expectant and the floor is open for you. So are you ready, ma'am? Uh uh, yes, I'm ready. Uh, I want to thank you all for uh, this uh, session and for this opportunity. Uh, actually, I'm glad to meet you all here. Um, uh, I can say that more of my profile is focused in Ethiopia, but I have done uh, different consultancy workers out of Ethiopia. So uh, although currently I'm... Uh, focusing in Ethiopia's business uh, ecosystem. Uh, I also focus in other uh, countries, especially uh, Africa. So it's a good opportunity for me to meet my uh, brothers and sisters here. So uh, I hope we'll have a good session. And I want to thank you for sharing my profile and introducing me as well. Uh, so uh, as you have stated, uh, today's uh, session is on uh, pitching. So I have been here uh, in this uh, ecosystem uh, by facilitating the startup, uh, global startup award. I will, I'm a focal person for that. And also I'm working, I have been working on also uh, a big event that has been organized by Ethiopian government, the prime minister's office uh, that focus on startups. Uh, building the startups ecosystem. So uh, this is a, a good topic that, I wa that I'm currently focusing on. So even today I was in the national media discussing about the, the challenges and uh, opportunities related to the startup ecosystem. So uh, I'm, uh, I believe we're going to have a good session and a successful session together. So before that, I think I could see around 10 people in the session. Um, so Aaron, you can help me on that. Uh, so as a number of participants in this session is not that much. So I want to start from by introducing our service. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. My sc Okay, great. So let's do, I introduced myself already. Uh, so I want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. You can tell us your name, uh, where you come from and your expectation from this training session. Yes, my name is um, Okewa Biodu. I'm from Abeokuta, Nigeria, and um, I have great ex high expectation in this session. Um, yeah, I want to sharpen my knowledge on how to pitch my business um, and get um, wealth of a bit of some uh, insight from your wealth of experience. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone volunteer can jump in. You can just uh, unmute and proceed. Okay. Good yes, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Okay. okay. My name is Matilda Mariana, and I am happy to be part of this program. Why am I here? I want to know more about business startup from session to startup, and then yes, make profit at the end of the day. I want to add value to the society. And I'm happy to be part of this entrepreneurial class. Thank you, Ma. All right, thank you. Who's next? May I just call your name? Uh, Ida, I, I, I want to apologize first if I pronounce your name wrongly. Um, Ida Fibia Joyce. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is um, Ida Fibia Joyce, and I'm here to learn from your wealth of knowledge. Thank you. Oh, Wandy. One day, one day, okay. Uh, maybe we can go for Chokes Crystal. I just wanted to know your expectation from this short session. Uh, okay, okay. Anyone, anyone who wants to jump in until they unmute and uh, come back to us, just to know your expectation from this session. Can you hear me? We have wrote uh, around uh, five expectations so far. Uh, anyone uh, who want to introduce themselves and tell us your expectation? Um, okay. Um, okay. Anyone? I think I Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Great. Okay. So mentorship, I think I'm expecting that we'll have some sort of mentorship. 
we can see your great um, work of wisdom and we'll be happy to be mentored alongside you. Yes, Ma. Great. It's okay. Thank you. Are we lucky to get another one? Another person who want to jump in? Well, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Okay, I am uh, Chooks O. Joshua. I run uh, an education media firm. For me, I would want to actually get more knowledge I, uh, on taking the business to the vision uh, I actually have in mind. Of, of course, we've suffered a lot of setback and getting back on track uh, seem to be a little bit uh, Herculean. So uh, a handsome mentorship project and uh, understanding on how to get around and especially get uh, business investors to be able to come into the business we are doing will be very great. And uh, I think that's it, man. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So I think uh, we're left with, uh, I think, ED Africa team. So, so far, seven people introduced. If there is anyone that I didn't see here, uh, I want to give you the opportunity. Also, my, we have people on the chat who, who dropped um, some comments on the chat box. I guess they were actually in a noisy place. So I'll read out the expectations and, um, so that you can get what they have. Also, so um, can I go on? Yeah, yes, please. Okay, so this is from um, Oc um Ocon Fred. He said, "My expectation is just to tap from your wealth of experience." That's Ocon Friend. Then um, Emmanuel, who is saying is is in a noisy place. He said, "I'm expecting a better approach to managing business." That's um, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. and I think those are the two comments that come in. And one day he's saying he's in the noisy, it's really in his area, so it wouldn't be so um, audible from this area. So those are the three comments that came in um, in referral to what you were asking. Okay, ma. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, thank you for sharing your expectation and introducing yourself. So I want to focus on what we are going to address in the session, and then I want to relate it with uh, your uh, expectation. Um, like, for example, uh, how to pitch uh, my business. This is uh, one thing we're going to address in the session. Uh, know more about the startups. We will uh, anchor our presentation uh, with the examples related to startups and getting a new knowledge. I hope you get a new knowledge uh, with this uh, presentation, with our session. And pitching skill, um, that's, that's, that is our main focus here. And mentorship, uh, I'm glad to provide you a mentorship. Uh, I'll try to make the session as productive as possible, but it, although it's a long process, I think we may link and uh, uh, have interaction in the future, even after this session. I think the mentorship may not be covered with the session as it's a long process and it, leaks, uh, it needs uh, personal interactions and uh, a lot of activities in it. It's not just a one-time action, it's a long process. Uh, knowledge on managing the business and knowledge uh, uh, about setbacks of the business. I want, I'm trying to merge them, some of them that we can't address in this session, but we may have another session to address them in detail and better approach to manage a business. This is a very interesting topic. The thing is that you, may, that you mentioned about how to manage a business, uh, what are the challenges and how to face these challenges. And also getting uh, a linkage with investors and uh, uh, other uh, ecosystem players that can help me to uh, tackle my setbacks related to my business. So uh, these are some uh, action-related and process-oriented activities that can be handled in the future. I hope the ED Africa team We'll also have a follow-up uh, on this uh, activities. And if there is another session related to uh, managing a business, we'll have a particular or specific focus on that. Uh, but for now, our session uh, focus will be, I hope everyone see my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. The one I shared? Great. Yes. Uh, thank you. So our focus for this session will be, we have a, a one hour session, a training session allocated to us. We will focus about crafting a compelling business speech. Uh, 
That's one topic we're going to cover. Uh, and the other one is identifying key components of a successful pitch. What are the key components of successful pitch and what, what, what does it look like uh, when we make a successful pitch? And the other one is practicing effective communication and presentation skills. So these are the major topics to focus on uh, in this session that have been uh, provided by ED Africa team. Uh, that's why I want to take your expectation and want to address them because uh, we will focus on the other topics that you have mentioned uh, because like managing a business, uh, knowing the setbacks and giving solution for the setbacks is a long-term process that we may not do it uh, at a time. So we'll focus on these three uh, major topics in our session. I hope it will be a very interactive uh, session. You can ask me anything. You can add some pointers you want in our uh, discussion. Uh, you can share your own examples and your own challenges related to this content. So I hope everyone uh, a nice time. So uh, let's start uh, from the art of pitch. So why what do you think we say uh, pitching is an art? We say pitching is an art. And I want to start from a very interesting topic that says the art of pitching. Can anyone raise your hand and tell me what do you mean by uh, the art of pitching? Why, why, why do we say pitching is an art? I want to see your hand. So uh, I want to put this on. So can anyone raise your hand and tell me why do we say pitching is an art? Because it's our uh, initial discussion point, and that will give us the overall image about pitching. Uh, ED Africa team, if Aaron, if you are there, you can assist me. Um, just, just tell me what you think. There is no wrong answer when there is adult learning. So you can tell me whatever you think you, you have uh, in your mind about pitching and what's the art of pitching, why pitching is an art, anything. You can say anything before we proceed. I give you the floor. Anyone? I couldn't see a hand. Can you see any? Uh, Aaron, can you see any? Any ED Africa team member? Uh... All right, can, I, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you, yeah. Well, for me, pitching is an art because of the goal it's meant to achieve. And because of uh, because of the goal, you, you, the, the end goal is to convince an audience and um, and also it's an art because of all that has to be put into it. So you want to communicate an idea and you want um, an audience to, to know, to be convinced of what you are projecting. So for me, that takes a lot. There's a way you communicate. There's a, there's a gesture, there's a, there are tools to be used. There's a way to bring all this together to make a statement that will drive the idea home. So that's why I see pitching as an heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Blaze Ford. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, anyone who wants to add on this? Yes. Yes, ma. Okay, but, uh, please proceed. <laughs> okay, ma. So business and greater pitch or pitching is you having a short presentation about what you are, what you are doing your name, the value you provide, and then um, how how attractive you can you make it sound to maybe your business investors, people that want to invest into it, or people that would you think would need your products. You make it so sound, you make a short presentation that will, will, will catch their attention. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. It's a nice reflection. Uh, thank you, both of you. So we want to make this session as interactive as it's now. Uh, everyone can jump in and give comments. Um, I want to say something related to why we call pitching an art. Uh, the art of pitching uh, is uh, like, uh, especially uh, the, in, the, in, the, in this today's competitive environment, as you know, everyone is competing for success. Everyone trying to do businesses. Countries are launching themselves as startup nation, entrepreneurial nation. So everyone is being alert and they want to introduce themselves. They want to sell their ideas. They want to sell their products and services. So uh, it's a very important thing to pitch or to know how to pitch. We call it an art because it's something that you can master by using these techniques and by practicing it a lot. 
So it's not just a, a science or a theory or a concept that you can read or that you can go through and um, internalize. It's something that you learn by practicing. It's something that you know the system and that you know the science of doing it by understanding the pattern of behaviors, how people are listening to you, how people are communicating to you, the situation, the timing and everything. So the more we do it, the more we master it, the more we practice it, the more we master it. So it's an art that we can do by using uh, our experiences and by using how we can observe environments, how we can observe people and how we can observe situations. So it needs some more practice. It's not something that we can see once and that we can uh, master at a time. So uh, when we come to pitching, it's not only for businesses. You can be a, a salesperson who wants to sell your product. You have to do a pitch. You can be a project who wants to secure funding. You will do a pitch. You can do a business owner who wants to take uh, to talk to investors to assist you on funding. You do a pitch. So pitching is everywhere. We can do pitching in different situations. So it's it's very essential or it's very important or crucial for us to know the art of pitching and to know how to pitch. So sometimes doing effective pitch can be a deal breaker. Like we can do very successful projects. We can do something very important. We can design an amazing product, an amazing service. But if we don't know how to pitch it, it may not be um, going as we want it. So uh, pitching is an art that everyone should master it. Uh, it's also a way of uh, communicating our values. So why pitching matters can be addressed here like uh, sometimes we confuse pitching with uh, just making presentation. Pitching is uh, not making a presentation. Pitching is more de detailed. Pitching is more emotional attachment or creating an emotional link with the, with the individuals or with those that were pitching. So it goes beyond making presentation. So there has to be an emotional linkage. Uh, there, there has to be an emotional attachment with those that we are making pitching for. So we don't have to uh, relate or we don't have to think pitching and presentation are similar. Uh, we are communicating our values to others, the values that we make to the market, the values that we are providing to them. So it's not only doing some kind of presentation, preparing some slides, preparing some PowerPoints and telling them what's content written there. It goes beyond understanding the people, understanding how people are thinking about what we are talking, understanding what people are looking from our presentation. So there has to be emotional uh, attachment or emotional relation with those that we are making a pitch. So it's, it really matters in making us grow, especially the way that we are, we are presenting ourselves, the way we are presenting our products or services should be appealing to others. So there has to be some uh, emotional um, linkage when we make uh, uh, pitching. So uh, there are some points I have stated here, as you see, like uh, we have to make sure that we are grabbing attention. So our pitch should capture the audience's interest and make them eager to learn. So the thing is we see at the beginning, the face we show, the smile we have really matters to grab their attention. So in order to create this emotional attachment with them, we have to make sure uh, what we are going to talk about is interesting to them. So we have to put our service in their place or in their shoe and think what they need from me. Anyone who knows W I I F, please raise your hand and tell me. It's a very key key point. W I I F. Anyone who have heard about the station, it's a station. It's a station, W-I-I-F, anyone who knows it before, please raise your hand and tell me, anyone, W-I-I-F station. We can call it a radio station, for example, or a TV station. Or... 
have heard about this station. It's international station that works for everyone and for anything. W I I F. Just raise your hand and tell us. It's very, it's a key. It's a very important term. It's a very important station that will be a deal breaker for our pitch. W I I F. Anyone? Okay, shall I proceed? I wanna give. Yeah. I wanna. Uh, okay. Anyone comes in? Mitila, Matilda. Sorry. Did you open your speaker? No, ma. Yes, yes, please. If you could please repeat the question, ma. Uh, I'm asking, what do we mean by W I I F related to pitching? It's, I say it's very crucial and important term in doing a pitch. W I I F. No idea, mom. Okay, okay, let me tell you. Okay, let me tell you. I don't want to bother Thank you. So, W I I F is what is in it for me? I want everyone to write this, to write it here or to write it in your notebook on to, to just have this in mind. Whenever you do pitching, whenever you reach to people, whenever you reach to investors, whenever you rush to anyone that you are going to pitch for, everyone looks for what is in it for me. So you have to find this Wi-Fi, I call it a station. I call it an international station uh, that everyone needs to know, everyone needs to use. So uh, what some, some, sometimes people call it Wi-Fi. So it's called what is in it for me. So you have to find something interesting or some value to communicate uh, with others. So you will communicate with them. When you communicate, the first thing is identifying what is in it for them. Like the, when, they, when they are there to listen to you, they want to know this. If you are to, doing this, uh, especially one-to-one -one or if they sorry this pitching to get something to get some funding resource or something you have to identify that and the other one is communicating values uh, as we have to identify what is the value of your product what value are you going to give to the market what is it your quality of the quality of the product is it the new type of innovation you bring is it the, the low price that you are bringing is this the ease of uh, living or ease of usage you are making, what did you bring? So you have to identify the value that you are communicating with them. Uh, and also pitching will help you to persuade others to build trust and credibility to your audience. If you know how to pitch, even we have to know how to pitch ourselves. We have to know how to talk about ourselves, not only our product and services. So when we do that, we can build trust, just how to do it. Sometimes when we see startups, one of the, the problem related to startups pitching is when the investor come to talk to you on when, the, when someone come to give you funding or to put you in some other project to provide you something beneficial that will grow your business, sometimes they may not tell the truth. So when you do pitching, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't modify. Don't add up something that's not there but know how to beautifully, how to uh, uh, successfully put your product and service in the mind of others to create their interest and to have this emotional attachment. But make sure that you don't lie. Investors know, donors know. The one that we are pitching will identify whether we are lying about our product or about our service, about what we have done and what we don't do, they clearly see that. So we have to make sure that we are not lying. So I'm not saying you're lying, but we have seen this um, in most of the startup related pitching. So that will be just a killer for your business and for your future reputation as well. So we have to make sure we are telling the truth, but in a good and in a, good, in a compelling way. So once we do that, we don't have to just say bye bye to the uh, to the individuals, to the investors or companies. We have to make sure that we are driving action. That uh, we want to make sure that we we make these uh, uh, individuals who are attending us, whether they are going to 
uh, purchase. We, can, we have to make sure they have this intention of purchasing our products, intention of buying our idea, intention of maybe having another follow-up meetings with us. So we don't have to look that we are craving for that. You know, mostly we are, uh, this uh, startups look craving for something like they want to take, they want to get it immediately as soon as possible on the spot and want to make this confirmation. I uh, want to get this, say that I'm going to take, I'm going to invest. We may not get it immediately. If we get the hint and if we get the understand, if we know their actions or intention, if we drive them to that action, well, that's very important. So we don't have to look this craving and forcing and just... Um, if we build that interest uh, to drive into action, it's very important. Uh, the other one is the anatomy of a winning pitch. A winning pitch has its own clear structure, its own clear formation and structure uh, on how we're going to design it. Uh, it should have a hook, you know, a hook. A hook that's going to grab something like, for example, this hook will grab it and take it. And there is an attachment that will hook us, that will bind us with those that are attending our pitch. The representatives of an organization, the investors themselves, and the key people in that uh, uh, in the place to represent them. The first one is we will grab their attention with a strong opening. Like, for example, we have to create something unique. We don't have to go and just and say, I have a best product that I'm going to produce for you. We have to think of something very interesting, very interesting. Like, for example, um, something realistic and interesting. You, you can come up with something that they can say, aha, what's she going to talk about? It's been, aha, they will say that, something like that. So we have to find, it can be an example it can be um, a unique thing that you bring. You can talk about something that can open their eyes, that can open their ears. So what is that hook? We have to identify the hook uh, that will help us to introduce uh, the problems that we are going to address. So entrepreneurs are decision makers. Entrepreneurs are problem solvers. Entrepreneurs are value adders. Most of the time, we link entrepreneurship with business only. It's not only business uh, related. Entrepreneurship is all about value. It's all about creating values to institutions, to individuals, to the system, to the country. So we have to find that hook. And the other one is we have to define our problem in our, uh, especially when we write our pitch about our products and services, we have to start by something interesting, as we said. The second one is we have to know the problem that we are solving and why solving that problem is important. Like one of Ethiopian startup that win the Global Startup Award last year, uh, this year we also hold it here uh, at EDI. Uh, we, we finished the, uh, the East African uh, finally. Uh, the regional final will be around October here this year and also will go for the global. So the last year's winner of Global Startup Award, he's called uh, Adus. Uh, he, his company is called Cubic. So he produced uh, something out of this, uh, this cover, this uh, mineral water cover, this plastic bag. And those plastic bags, he will just um, process them to make a brick a brick to build a house. So he's also building houses in the city. He's building houses in the US and also other African countries. So when he comes there, he's not saying that I'm the best one, I'm going to build a brick. He said, when I collect these items, I will uh, I will solve the problem, this environmental related issues, the problem that comes with pollution. This, you know, so you will talk about the problem that you are going to solve and why it's important to solve that problem. And why this problem, why not solving this problem is affecting the society. So you have to find for your product and services, your problem, why it's important to solve this problem. And also how, when you solve this problem, problem is it, it will impact the environment or the organization or individual's life. So you can briefly put that or write it. And also you'll introduce your product or service and highlight 
the unique benefit and value proposition that you are offering. Like, for example, when we talk about Cubic, there are other use, other startups that also produce uh, some bricks out of this wastages. But he makes it unique because he only, he, he said he's not, sometimes when they produce uh, in Ethiopia, when we have these startups that collect these plastics, uh, wastages, they will mix it with, uh, Sanders, they will mix it some uh, other other products, other byproducts. But he said, I'm not mixing it with anything. I only use this product and a chemical so that I collect more of it. So you have to identify your your USP, your unique selling proposition. What makes you unique? There may be 10, 20, or hundreds of the same companies that have the same type of product, but what you have to make sure you find what makes your product, what makes your service unique. So you should highlight the unique benefits of and value proposition of your offering. Have you ever come out of that? Have you did you know the best way of putting your clinic selling proposition? Think over it. And uh, you have to boldly tell your audience what you wanted them to do next. You have to identify before going there. I have heard one saying that uh, one of the scholars in the personal development, uh, he said that rather than directly going and approaching uh, uh, an audience that I want to help me, I rather prefer going around, going back, going forth on their gate before entering to that office for four hours. Rather than just directly knocking and entering, I prefer if I just stand there or think about it for four hours. He's saying just directly approaching these individuals is so damaging and impactful. So we have to identify what I expect from them and how I'm communicating with them. So you have to tell your audience clearly, once you tell them your position, I expected this from you. One of my friends, she have this opportunity to meet the president of Ethiopia, Ethiopia Her Excellency Salur Kazaudi, to meet them with uh, some other research related things. And she said, when, when Her Excellency asked her what she wants to do for her, she said, I don't know, because she, she's not prepared at all. <laughs> you may go to some investors and you may say, just help me grow my business, help me to grow my business. Did, did you want that guy to give you funding? Do you know that guy? Do you want that guy to give you training? Do you want that guy to give you, to make you a subcontractor? Do you want that guy to link you with another key person? You have to clearly identify what you are going to tell to your audience before you are going there. So you have to make sure this structure is clearly put here, the things that I've uh, stated. So um, these are some of the points. Uh, I want to ask you a question before I, I proceed to the next one. What do you think should be our major focus while crafting a pitch? We have talked some of them, but I want to give you a summary on our focus. It's very important. Uh, the next slide will be very uh, interesting. Please tell me, what do you think should be uh, our major focus while we're crafting a pitch? I'm waiting. Hello, Ma. Yes, please. Okay, so from what you said so far, I think what you said is, what is it meant for me? You have to think of that one and then think of your unique selling positions, your USP. You have to bring all these out. Make sure you have a okay. passionate presentation okay. so your investors yeah. can buy into a new idea that you have. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Anyone who wants to add on this question? Okay. Let me go to the add another presentation. Um, okay. Can you see this slide? Know your audience. It means that before you are going... There, you have to make research and you have to identify their pain points. I, you have to figure out what is their point, their pain point, what's their goal. There, you don't have to be shy to talk about, I'm going to solve this. You identify it first and you have to go there talking about their pain point, not about your experience. Like I may go there and say, my bet is this experience. She was university lecturer. She was uh, she teach in a university in that big university for six years. She do, she do, they, they don't want to listen to all this. You have to talk about something related to uh, their pain point. You have to tailor your presentation about what they want to hear. Like, for example, you are here to attend this presentation. If I talk about 
what EDI is the one that I'm uh, a director for the trade partnership and uh, communication. If I say EDI is doing this, EDI is doing that, um, EDI is, you know, we have all the stuff. You don't give, you don't want to listen to that because you, you are here to listen to me about the speeching and presentation and communication skill. So when you go there, you have to identify their pain point, their goal and talk about that. And the other one is focus on benefits. You don't have to focus about the feature of your product. I have been a judge in most of these st startup competitions in Ethiopia at a national level. Some of them will come there and talk about the size of, like, for example, they may produce a brick. They may talk about the different size of the bricks. Some of it is steel, some of it is white, some of it is... They, they just waste their time about talking about the feature of their product. So our major focus should be the benefit of our uh, product or service. And we have to keep it simple. Don't talk about jargons. One of the competitors last, last time uh, when there is a national startup award uh, competition, he was talking about mostly this all words that we don't know. All the judges are there coming from different expertise, uh, sitting together to evaluate the pitch. He, he have these old jargons, jargon words, like, for example, technical terms that we don't know. About the electrics, uh, he, he, he have this uh, soil uh, examiner machine that will help the farmers to know about the, the texture of their soil. And he talks about these words that we don't, all of us do not know about these words. And technical words, how the machine is made, how the circuit is connected, and it will ha it will be a barrier for the communication and no one wants to continue on that all jargons that we put. So they have to make it simple, very simple that the audience will understand in the language of the audience. Sometimes the inverters may not be uh, literate enough to listen to our jargons. The inverters may not understand the language or may not know about this. Even for those that know the language, jargon will be more a barrier for our pitching. So we have to be more simple and use stories when you tell. Stories are so powerful. You have to make that moment or that pitch memorable for others. Like it can be in a way of telling a story, like telling a fiction, telling a story of person who have faced that problem. Like for example, some of them produce these uh, health equipment materials that will help uh, like a wheelchair, an automatic wheelchair. So it was a, a showcasing of the startups at the Science Museum, this big uh, hall in Ethiopia, this huge, huge, huge place. We let them in there for one month. So when he present, he produced this automatic wheelchair. And when he talked about it, it was very interesting. He was talking about how he bring this idea, like the story of his friend who was suffering from getting this wheelchair and getting a helper who can push the wheelchair. And one of them were uh, doing these sticks for uh, this blind people. The stick will tell you about now there is a water, now there is a stone, now there is something. So when they talk about that, they may talk about what's the story behind of that tool, or they may talk about the solution or a story of someone, it's a story that, that this material or this product will solve for someone. You may link it with rural individual. You may link it with women. You may link it with in the environmentally friendly concepts. You may link it with elderly people. So that story should be catchy and should be memorable. So these are a very important points that we need to consider. Uh, let's let's advance more on the techniques uh, of this pitch. We have to anticipate uh, objections like going or thinking of the worst case scenario. Anyone who is willing to share us, have you faced any 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 scenarios before that are not pleasant? Is there anyone who have done a pitch before and get objections? Something that you don't expect happen? They 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 refuse you. They let you just go. I don't want to talk to listen to that or any other objections. Have you faced that before? Have you ever done a pitch before? Anyone? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I can hear you. Hello. Okay, sorry. Yes, um, yes. I'm quite, um, quite noisy, please. But yeah, I've had the opportunity to teach once. Um, I remember I was preaching for one million there. So, uh, well, it was a very interesting one, right? Um, I, I actually did not get made it successful. And one of the things that happened was that I missed certain facts while I was uh, preparing my pitch document, and it really impacted um, 
on on my, on my wish of testing in that pitch. I mean, I I got it was actually a learning opportunity for me, and I'm seeing them. Each time I want to prepare for a tipping competition, I try to make sure that oh, I get my facts right. I'm quoting any source, any historical source, any document, and make sure I get my facts right. You know, particularly when I when I was trying to state the problem, the problem statement for my business, I miss that was where I actually missed a lot of things, and you know, it's practically invalidated uh, most of the the practically the entire um, idea I brought up was practically invalidated because I missed I missed of the, the entire part of my problem statement. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have to think of what will I say if there's objection. It's obvious that they may have concern about your price, your competition, feasibility of your idea. So you have to be prepared for that to come. No, don't always fantasize on the things they say, oh, okay, that's a great idea. I'm going to help you on that. I'm going to put my funding on that. I'm going to put you in this training and this competition and this market linkage. So we have to think of the objections and get ready for that. And we have to be prepared about our visual aids. We have to be serious on that. We may bring our sample products there. We may bring some pictures, some quite not picture. When we say picture, it should not be something that is not attractive. So we have to make sure it's a quality one, even short video. I can tell you that in most of the competitions that I have been a jury, those who bring an attractive presentation especially real presentation, not something, uh, some animation or some attractive picture. So some foreigners, some other countries in the US or something like that, a real beneficiary's picture using our product. A small video, a small video that shows the, the, the issue, the problem and the solution. It can be one minute video or 30 minute video. Some of them are wise enough when we're uh, having this uh, competitions, they will say, I have a short video, may I show you? And they will open it and it's will they will get our attention. Some of them will just come here with all these numbers and data to talk about their product. It may be very attractive, but it may not convince one. So we need to power up our presentation with something tangible, like some presentation, slides, infographics, pictures, our tracing. We can make our our brand can with branded items or branded clothes by our product. So we have to make it more interesting and uh, artistic. Uh, I'll be brief on that. And also the storytelling. We have talked about this uh, story and the body language that we are using. Sometimes our body language speaks more than while we are talking. Uh, these days, as you know, the attention span of individuals, especially adults like us, is getting shorter and shorter. <laughs> they don't want to listen to the things that we are saying. They can get the information by having how we are talking about that, the confidence inside us when we speak about that. Like, we, are we making an eye contact or not? I have seen in the, in the, in the previously in the East African Startup Award that we host before, like uh, a month, probably a month here, uh, they will just, uh, they will not look into the eye of the jury, look into the eye of the audience. So I think someone raised your hand. I want to I wanna give you the opportunity. I'll stop here. Please proceed. Okay, so um, while we're talking about um, power body language, I wanted to ask a question about... Um, um, pitching online. Now, I've, I've had an opportunity to pitch online, and well, I just wanted to know maybe you could share more things about pitching online and um, body language when you are um, pitching business, when you are handling uh, pitching online. Yeah, thank you. It's a it's a nice question. Uh, when we pitch online, you know. Uh, sometimes I, I, I've included here in my slide, if you see a slouching, have you seen this, the slouching? Like, for example, look at me. If I'm, I'm going to pitch online, if I sit like this, I know, I know one young woman who felt due to her position while we're being a jury online to her. She was on her bed sitting like this. Is it okay? You like it? Um, oh, relax. it can be, it can be. Too, too, too much. Too like it, it. It shows our seriousness that we are not giving attention, or we are not. You sometimes even using this uh, digital instruments. How to use this presentations online? How to make presentation online? Which button are we going to make? Our voice and the connection and the tools that we are using and the way we'll sit. If I sit here, like, like sometimes our sitting may show some nervousness, like if I sit here like this, if I sit, and the dressing, how we are making, everything that works in a face-to-face -face will work also for the for the online pitching. 
But what matters is when we do this online pitching, we have to be well prepared. We may have this slides, videos that we show them that are, uh, like for example, the Global Startup Award is online. Most of it is online and except the finalists, uh, they do this face-to-face -face pitching. Most of the, it is made online. So you may send some documents, some videos, documents along with your presentation. So it's the same way as that, except how we know to, to use this, this current digital uh, instruments in digital tools and most of them. So we have to learn, we have to teach ourselves and understand, and also the language we are using to explain ourselves in a virtual uh, communication is also uh, very important. So it gives, when, when we are nervous, it shows, like when we are not prepared enough, when we are well prepared, it shows uh, our nervous. So being well prepared, having a good eye contact, standing firm, being well dressed and uh, having all the confidence to speak about our products, very essential. So uh, is your question answered or? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very much satisfied. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So let's proceed to the other one. Uh, I want to talk about only one thing in this slide. There are three rules, three, three rules to make a good presentation. The first one is practice. The second one is practice. The third one is practice. Don't after underestimate a one minute or two minute or second event. Don't after underestimate or don't trust yourself that you are good at it, that you are well prepared. You have to practice, practice, and practice. You can present it with yourself in front of a mirror. You can present it with your colleague, with someone you trust, with your spouse, with your children, with, with maybe alone here. Like, so like everyone is sitting here. So I have to act like I'm doing the presentation there and do it again and again to make sure that I got the confidence. Uh, I want to ask you a quiz question. Uh, I want to talk about this elevator uh, pitch. Can anyone tell me about what you mean by elevator pitch? Any one of you, because we're talking about pitch. I okay. don't want to Okay. Let me let me uh, say something about it. I think um, an elevator pitch will be more or less like a 60 second pitch. As you know, like an elevator, um, that very short time you have to tell someone about your business. Imagine you are in an elevator. It's not going to take maybe more than a minute. You need to drive your point home um, at the very instant as fast as possible and try to convince that person almost immediately. That's great. Thank you for that. Uh, anyone who has done elevator pitch before and tell us how did it went? How did it go? Anyone? Have you done that before? Okay. Well, for me, I've not actually done an elevator pitch in the formal setting, but um, in an informal setting, more or less like if we has a where well, I had the opportunity to do an elevator pitch. Well, um, in that informal setting, uh, I, I would say it's, it's very difficult to drive home the point in 60 seconds, actually, in a very short time. It's very, very difficult, but with discipline and um, practice, I believe that I could get better at it. Great. Thank you. Uh, Any one of you, have you prepared a uh, 50 second of uh, your, your, your company's uh explanation for two minutes of presentation two minutes of pitch about your business one minute of pitch about your business 30 seconds of pitch about your business imagine that you meet one of these big investors that you are looking to one of those millionaires and you are in the same place in the elevator you are going from the first floor to the third floor or fifth floor sixth floor or anything is standing next to she's standing next to you have you prepared anything, the shortest, smallest version of your introduction or your pitch? So if you are not, you should work on that. The idea of making this elevator pitch comes from uh, having, we can even get uh, sponsors. We can even get supporters, even while we are at the elevator. Even while we are standing next to someone where the lift is going from somewhere to somewhere, that's a sufficient time to grab the attention or to hook the thing that we mentioned about hook, to hook uh, the, the interest of someone so that uh, it, it, it will be one thing that we can secure support or business so we can think of the shortest version. So as my uh, friend uh, explained now, it is um, a short description of an idea, product, company, 
that explains the concept why such that a listener can understand in a short period of time. Uh, last time I have a meeting with one of the furniture companies in Ethiopia, the biggest one. She was there and she talks about she she's she's like a, she her stay business like for 30 years or more. She is a good business owner, a very experienced owner. The business is big, having all those branches. She had a lot of products. But she said, I suddenly meet the president of Development Bank. He was next to me on the elevator. And I said, uh, I just introduced about my product and everything. She said, I secure uh, support from Development Bank to get a lease financing to the 30 or 40 million uh, uh, dollar machiners. Only at the elevator. So we have to make sure we have the shortest version, a concise one, a good one about our ideas, businesses or a product. So uh, the steps, we may deliberately make that to meet that person or that individuals. We may do research. We should keep it brief, very brief. We should have the, the, our, our unique skill. We should identify if it is something that I'm providing individually at a business, if, if it's my skill, I have to talk about my skill. I have to talk about my unique selling proposition about my product, my goal, and have a business card ready. Do you have your business card ready? When you are going everywhere as a business owner or as a business uh, man or woman, you should have your business cards ready so that you'll give it. But from the business card, what matters most is the hook, the interest you get uh, first. Um, uh, I, I want us to make a, a based elevator pitch practice. Uh, if there is anyone here who want to share, who want to talk about their product or service briefly for seconds, like 30 seconds, like imagine that we made in the ground floor in the in the elevator. So we're going to the sixth floor. Imagine that I'm like one of the billionaires in Nigeria. You made me in the elevator. Anyone willing who can tell me about their product or service? It can be, okay, let me add more time for a minute. Just tell me now. Just not being prepared, just tell me. And let's see how it went. Anyone volunteer? And the judges will be the participants. The participant will, will give us comments. Anyone? Okay, Ma, I want to try. Okay, please, please. Okay, so Ma, hello, good morning. My name is Matilda. It's nice meeting you. I am into energy renewal. Or let me say renewable energy, namely biogas. So my the name of my business is Aminet Renewable Energy Enterprise. The aim of my business is to give every household the opportunity to produce their own energy and have a sense of control over their source of energy, knowing that there is worth in their sewage. Thank you. Do you think we can do this? Great. Okay, well, please, that's it. <laughs> Great. Please give her comments on this. It's very interesting. It's nice. It's very brief. Uh, anyone who wants to give her comments on this. Anything to point of improvement, anything, if there's anything she wants to adjust. Will you call her back? Imagine that you are next to her. Will you call her back? Okay. We cannot do this elevator pitch for everyone, right? For everyone. Sometimes we may get these opportunities spontaneously, or sometimes we may target these individuals or these people that we want to pitch for. So um, it's very interesting. It's short, it's precise, but you can also modify more. Uh, like for example, I, I, I didn't get your unique selling proposition. You talk about your product, you talk about the benefit, uh, the problem and the solution, but you don't talk about how uh, the solution, what, what the solution will solve. Like for example, you talk about you're going to help householders with this uh, renewable energy. Uh, it's it's very interesting. I want to appreciate that. It's good just for a point of improvement that it's good if you talk uh, uh, about your unique uh, selling proposal from other this in the market who are doing this renewable energy businesses who are renovating on that. And also what will happen if the solution is solved for those households. So if you add only this to it will be enough, but it's good. It's perfect. Uh, I want to appreciate you on that, on your comment. So uh, is it okay? Shall we proceed? Are you with me? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, you're audible. You're very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so if it is clear, let us proceed. Um, 
let's talk about uh, uh, communication. We have talked a few points related to the pitch and also come our next topic is communication. What's communication for you? I will, I will be more brief on this. Uh, what's communication for you? Please tell me by raising okay, your hands. Um, if I would speak on communication. Oh, sorry. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so for me, I think communication is when a message is passed, is being um, given by someone and it is received and understood by the receiver. That's um, communication from my perspective. Thank you. Anyone who wants to add? And then United States okay, States so States communication States is an interaction States between States two States people States or States more. States interaction States between States people, a sender, a receiver, and then they understand in decoding the message to give a, a feedback. Then you can say that it has been a complete communication. Great, great. It's interesting. Uh, a good, you, you give a good description about communication. Um, communication is essential in life whether in our personal life or in our work life, you can notice or you can sense your life goes smoothly or smoother when you have a good communication with people. Communication is about people. So when we communicate well, we can see how important it is to smooth our business, especially for businessmen. Communication is very crucial. So it's an essential thing, or as my sister said now, it is uh, a meaningful exchange of information between two or more uh, individuals or participants. Um, let's go for uh, about communication. It's a dynamic process. It's a, a unique and changing process. Uh, it's a process where we talk about our feelings. We talk about issues, individuals, ideas, businesses, and organizations. So, um, uh, and also our plans and what we want to do. So how, how we say about, uh, uh, how you say about what you say is very important in, in, in your communication. So we have to think over it. It should be a conscious process, a dynamic process. It's not a one-time action. Communication begins with self. Communication begins with being prepared, knowing ourselves, knowing, doing our analysis, situation analysis. How many of you have this conversation or meeting with yourself? Knowing our strengths, our weaknesses, knowing our product, what I like, what I don't like, how I want to communicate, what's my language. One of the, uh, the, the startup who have this amazing product in the previous award, He's really good. He have this amazing business idea. Yeah, he bring his prototype. He's well prepared, but at the end of the presentations, he was like really down when I meet him. And I was organizing, and I sit at the back when I uh, when uh, the deputy prime minister was making a speech. I was I was at the back waiting and seeing. And he said, "I feel really down. I have to work on on my communication." He say he, he only speak Amharic well. He's not good at English because most of the juries were English speakers. And he tried, he was struggling to, to speak in English rather than using Amharic. Sometimes you may say that I want to use my language. I, I can speak well by my language rather than using English. So he was really down that he say he noticed how, how important it is to work on improving his uh, fluency, improving his English. So he, 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 that's one thing that he found suddenly after doing the pitch. So we have to communicate with our service. Uh, communication involves others as well. We have to understand others uh, and also understand our service. We say, why do we think that we say communication is complicated? Do you think it's complicated? Why do you think it's complicated if you believe on that? And if you disagree, you can tell me. Is it complicated? Why do we say it's complicated? Okay. Uh, we say communication is with people. Um, yes. Anyone want to proceed? Hello, ma. Hello, ma. Yes, yes, please. Okay, so we can say communication is complicated because you can communicate something, but you cannot determine how the other party, the end receiver, is going to decipher this information. 
So with you being able to allow our uh, being able to communicate the best um words or understanding for another person to understand exactly what you are saying and give your feedback makes it a bit complicated, Ma. That's really amazing. Because we want to make sure that we are successful in communication when we understand what the what the listener, what the reader, or what the other party, the receiver understands our message. Sometimes we may be surprised that the message we communicate is different from what the one that what they interpreted for, what they decodes. So we it's it's it needs more attention. It needs it's like uh, we say it's dynamic. We should it should it should be flexible. We should change it into the, the situation, the behavior of people, the way we are doing the channels and everything. There are a lot of issues involved with it. It's a huge topic. It's like a some days topic, but I want to compress it into this small session uh, as a as a ED Africa team gave me the assignment. So it's complicated as uh, you mentioned, and also. The more it doesn't mean that the more we talk, the longer time we take to communicate, we have we made a quality communication. Quality communication based on the planning we make to communicate, based on planning, how we plan to communicate and what messages we do, and the, the channels we use to send this message and our preparation. So it has a lot of components in it, and we cannot avoid communication. It's inevitable, irreversible, and unrepeatable so it needs a lot of preparation a lot of readiness plan and being conscious and being intentional especially for a businessman we should be intentional we don't we should not just think do things in our hope or without any plan like we cannot say everything uh, without any plan or without whatever we want or whatever we get like without any uh, plan so this is a process of communication i hope all of you know that that's what uh, we were talking about and i want to proceed about uh the communication uh, experiences, you know, as it is, uh, we have these pictures, it can be non-verbal, it can be verbal, it can be smell, it can be taste, anything, uh, we can consider it as a, a communication. And the other one is uh, our effectiveness in communicating is so important and powerful uh, for our success. What matters is our, our attitude and how we communicate with uh, people. So uh, everything is about communication, starting from waking up early from our morning, how we communicate with family members, when we go to on the road with colleagues and everything. This is the basic skill that we need to master. We make sure that we master. So because if it is a deal breaker for our success, if it is what matters for our success, we have to make sure we are practicing it. We have to check. We have to make personal uh, learning, like self self uh, education. We have to do a self education. Most of the things are available now currently on YouTube. There are a lot of tutors, free tutors, free courses. So we have to make sure that we improve on our communication to be more uh, effective and. Um, as we said, 80% of problems in a workplace are communication related. 80%. So we can see everything is about communication. Majority of our work of life, the things we do, the people we are in, the type of life we make, the type of choice you make, the type of people around us, our influencers, is highly interrelated with communication. So we have to make sure we are developing this skill. And we have to learn more about communication. So it 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 goes. Uh, there's a saying that goes that um, formal education will give you a paycheck, and self education or uh, personal development will give you a fortune. So we have to make sure we learn more, dig dig deep, uh, ask questions, and try to know more our, about uh, our strengths uh, and. Uh, weaknesses so communication is the way that we talk we communicate about uh, intelligence the more effective we are communicating the more effective the products the services we sell the people around us will be mattered by that so we have to uh, learn more 
So effective communication uh, during our presentation, uh, because mostly we're talking about speech and presentation, communication by itself is a very wide topic, as I told you. So we want to focus more about our presentation. Uh, we should be clear and concise when we present, especially when we pitch our product, when we talk about our businesses, we have to be clear. Our ideas and messages would be articulated with a concise language, avoiding the jargons and confusions. So we have to be bold and loud enough to clearly and concisely uh, communicate about our product. Communication mostly affected by or highly affected by our listening skill. It's very important to listen to others. Listening is not just hearing, it's not just uh, hearing what they are saying, understanding their gesture how they are reflecting, how they are showing us their interest and in what, how they are feeling. So we need to adjust our tone, the face, uh, content, how they are engaged with us. We, we may adjust, that's why we say communication is dynamic. Depending on their response, we may be dynamic and uh, changing our approach. So we should have active listening, listening with mind or with understanding. And it should be two-way. We should ask more questions. There is a book, I don't know whether you need it, a book uh, by uh, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, it's a very interesting book. I don't know whether you read, it, you read it or not. It's good if you read it. It says to annoy people, if you want to annoy people, don't listen to them. Don't be interested in them. Don't ask them questions. So the more we are interested on in them, the, the thing we mentioned about what's in it for me, the more we're interested to know more about them, to ask them questions, to engage them in dialogue, to more listen to what, what who they are, not about us. They say, they will say that, he said, if you spend like an hour and if you talk about the issues that you saw them interested, the issues about their life, who they are, what they take, about their business, their routines, they will say, I have an amazing time with this person because you listen to them, you give them attention. So we have to make sure it's two way and we have to be we ha know that we have this adaptive and flexible uh, communication, depending on how the things happen. We have to have these examples. We have to work on ourselves to improve uh, our uh, communication. So uh, I have only tip, few tips, uh, especially, for effective uh, presentation uh, while we're uh, on the stage. So we may have a fear of uh, stage. Some people have this fear of standing on the stage and talking about our products. Sometimes we may be shaking. Uh, I want to tell you that while I was a student in the university, I used to be shaking when I make the presentation, like the paper is like vibrating, something like this. But now I will be very interested if there are millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people in the whole world. So this comes just by practice or by doing things. Anyone who say, I have a fear on a stage, I cannot do it, will be improved by practice, by working on ourselves. If we do it more, if we do it in the group of two individuals, three individuals, four individuals, five individuals, our family members, when we, have to, when we use these opportunities when we are in the presence of others, our skill to uh, to communicate more will increase on the stage. And we may use also, there are a lot of techniques, a lot of details about this uh, presentation. So our time uh, may not be enough to have this deep, uh, deep uh, conversation about these tips and skills to do it on the stage. But I want to mention the major one, like the one is maintain a confidence eye contact. If we are afraid to make an eye contact, it says we can look into them around here, around their head. But they say that we are looking at their eye, but they may not notice. So looking them in their forehead around something, if we are have this uh, fear about seeing to their eyes, but we have to maintain a good eye contact, a good uh, posture. And also uh, our readiness will also help us on that to have a confidence. And, and also having this poses, uh, the, the, the poses, and you use a vocal variety. We shouldn't, have, we shouldn't be monotonous. Our voc vocal should be varying into different tones. And also we should be energetic and dynamic. We have to love the thing that we are talking about. 
people will notice us, will notice our confidence, whether we love that thing or not. Our gesture will show our eyes, the way our mouths move, our face moves, our eyes, everything will show us. So we don't have to think that they don't understand. So we have to be dynamic and energetic. Like the love you have for your products, the love you have for the things you say will interest your audience. So if we are, if we love what we are making about our product, our services, we have to be energetic, even our tone of voice. We have to be loud enough to be listened. We have to be loud enough to make our points to our audience. So that will make our audience to be very interested. So there are a lot of details, a lot of tips about presentation skill, communication skill, and pitching. I try to be more brief due to the time allotted for me. Uh, I want to uh, thank you for your attention, for listening to me, for actively participating. So I want to open for the floor for questions and discussions. Um, I, I want to thank you. So now the floor is open for any questions you have, comments or discussions, because our objective for the session was to talk about the pitch, how to have this uh, 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 the, the successful pitch, how to design, what are the contents of successful pitch. We have discussed about communication, effective communication, and also presentation skill uh, within the allotted time. Uh, that was our focus point for the session. Uh, so I want to thank you uh, for your attention. So I'm ready for questions and reflections. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Emma Bert. Thank you for the time. So as um, I believe we all have actually gained a lot. We've actually gotten a lot of tips, a lot of takeaways that will help us in our businesses and our pursuits. So as she rightly said, is there any question? So please, can questions start coming in? The chat box is open. So you can actually drop your question there Why I read it out and she answered. Please drop your question in the next few minutes. Our time is really fast, friend, but we have another speaker who will be coming from board. So in the next five to ten minutes, in the next five minutes, let's just drop our questions Why I read it out. And I believe uh, Mehmet will actually answer as fast as she can. So um, questions by everybody, the written or the commentation or suggestions or anything you have to ask our speaker for today. Please, we, we drop your questions. Any question, but we have, uh, we have um, our speaker available to answer any of your questions related to what she spoke about. So please, can our questions start coming in? I know we had a very, our section has been very interactive and it's been educating. So is there anything you want to ask or hard, you want to ask her or you want to actually get more clarification on? So please, the floor is open. Um, kindly drop your question ask your, or ask your question. Anybody? Okay. May I say everything is clear or wait your first suggestion? Probably one or two. I don't know about the session and how you see it because we want to make a closure now. Uh, if you don't have any question, if everything is clear, I want have. I want to take your comments on our session or maybe uh, uh, what you want to suggest. So I, I'm, I'm all over it. You can, you can go for that. Right? Yes, a we can. Yeah. A quiet yes, room, we can. A quiet, a quiet house. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have uh, a comment by Matsuda. She said... Um, she really enjoyed your section. And then she said, um, I enjoyed that I did learn a lot from you. So that's Thank from Tilda, even uh, thanking you for the section. So is there any other one before we actually call it today? It's um my breath. Okay, so um not to put more time in that note. Um we say a big thank you um on behalf of Africa and on behalf of everybody who has been involved in this lovely uh, section because it has been really, really engaging and educating and also uh, mind-blowing also because we then picked a few things and I, I believe we're wrong with what we've actually learned. So thank you, Emma Tekchen. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you for thank taking you. out time to have a talk with us. I believe we'll have another good time with you again some other time. And um, thank you again for your time from Africa. The same. Mm -hmm. Africa, I say thank you to you also for your time also. And um, have a lovely time. Have a lovely day. And um, we appreciate you. And uh, always uh, reach you out whenever we need one more, one more food. Thanks. So thank you, Ma. Thank you Thank very you much. so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed time. See you.